Now, a lot of Pauline theologies I've seen, they tend to jump in with something like straight to Romans or maybe use that as a template. Or they'll look at some uh, a number of key themes. Uh, Paul on the faithfulness of God begins like no other Pauline book I've read. I mean, you begin with Philemon. <laughs> with Philemon, he is the poor cousin of the family. If, if this was the Ant Antipodes, uh, he'd be New Zealand. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, beginning with Philemon, I mean, what is the deal with that? Well, as you know, New Zealand is one of the most beautiful countries well, on that Earth. That is true. That is true. <laughs> that's why they filmed The Lord of the Rings there and all the rest of it. But actually, you know, that's quite an interesting parallel. Um, the thing about Philemon is it's just a couple of dozen verses. It's a tiny little story printed on one page. But it's a little window through which we can see all sorts of things going on. And I've often said to students, and this is what I try to do in that opening chapter, that actually you can start with Philemon and discover that all the big issues are being raised. And the way that I do that is because, as people I'm sure watching this will know, Philemon is a letter to somebody who owns a slave about the fact that the slave has come to Paul in prison, the slave has got converted, and Paul is sending him back. And it's a very, very delicate thing to do in the ancient world. This is a major cultural fault line, a major problem. And Paul is beginning a revolution at that point. It's not the only letter we have from somebody to a master about a slave or a, a dependent in some way. And so I start with another letter, with a letter from Pliny writing a couple of generations after Paul. And there are other ancient letters as well uh, about um, somebody who is sort of sitting in this awkward gap between the writer and the recipient of the letter. And I compare Paul's letter and Pliny's letter. And you can see a whole world of difference. At one level they're the same, at another level it's totally different. And exploring what the difference is, is what the whole book is about. What difference did it make to be an early Christian from being an ordinary ancient Roman living by the ordinary rules of that society. And one of the reasons I did that was I didn't want to jump straight into the big crunchy theological topics. I wanted to say in order to study Paul we have to earth him in the real world of his day. The Greco-Roman world, the world where slaves were treated like this and women were treated like that, etc. etc. So we have to map the ancient world views of the world where Paul lived in order then to see how Paul's worldview is different and then to ask why is it different and that's when we get into the theology. And at the heart of Philemon, and people often miss this, is this extraordinary kind of symbolic thing that Paul does. And I often when I'm lecturing about this I find myself instinctively doing it visually. He is reaching out one arm and saying, Philemon, you're my partner. You and I have worked together. We belong together. You owe me your very life, actually, but you and I are absolutely bonded together. And then he reaches out the other arm and says, now here's this young man, Anisimus, who is my own child. I have become his father in my imprisonment. Obviously, that's because Anisimus has become a Christian under Paul's ministry. And he's my very heart. I love him dearly. And so we find this cross-shaped image of Paul stretching out his two arms, embracing Philemon and Onesimus, and saying, now, I want you two to be reconciled. And not only reconciled, but perhaps you'll do even more than I say. And I think in that perhaps we see the hint that Paul wants Philemon actually to give Onesimus his freedom. Now that's a tricky thing, because then you'd have a bunch of slaves queuing up at Paul's door saying, please will you write to my master to tell him to give me my freedom. Paul is doing something socially and culturally explosive, but this mission of reconciliation based on the cross is what, when Paul is put up against it, you know, what is your ministry all about? It's what, I'm at, what I'm about is the ministry of reconciliation. And so the end of 2 Corinthians 5 resonates very much with Philemon. That Paul says God has entrusted us with a ministry of reconciliation. And that is, if you like, reaching out to God and reaching out to the world. How has God in Christ reconciled the world to himself? But it's also re reaching out, as in Philippians, to Euodia and Syntyche. We don't know who they were, but there were two women in Philippi who were at loggerheads. Paul wants them to be reconciled. Reaching out to Philemon and Onesimus, reaching out to Jews and Gentiles, reaching out in all directions. And, and it's always cross-shaped. 
and Paul is living that. So in Philemon, though it's this tiny little letter, this is what I mean when I say it's like a little window, but if you press your nose up against this little window, you can see the whole landscape. And it's a landscape called reconciliation, and in the middle of that landscape you get the cross. And that's what Paul's all about. Philemon's a great place to start.